Hey everybody, Dylan here and welcome back to this week's Game Talk. There are a ton of articles and writings and videos out there about how to be a better game master, how to be a better storyteller, dungeon master, what have you. But we're going to talk today about the other side of the equation. Today's topic is 5 tips to be a better player. Tip number one. Say what you want. And what I mean by this isn't during the middle of a session or when something is happening, you pipe up and say, oh, I want that thing. But what I mean by this is be upfront and let your GM and the other people at the table understand exactly what it is you want out of the game you're playing with them. Do you want a heroic fantasy murder hobo adventure romp where you just beat up monsters all the time and there's not that much of a for focus on a core story? Tell everyone else that if you want a high intrigue, high politics, Game of Thrones, brutal backstabbing style of game, tell everybody else that if you want a game that plays with exploration, if you want to go to other planes and other places, you want some archaeology, you want some mystery, whatever it is you want, tell the people you're playing with what you want. If you don't tell them that. How are they supposed to accommodate you? How are they going to be able to adjust what they're doing or introduce elements to the storyline or to the game or to their characters that can entertain and can kind of grant the thing that you're asking for? If you do this and everybody else at the table does this, you can find where all these various desires intersect and that where these things intersect and overlap can be the core focus of your campaign. This tells the GM straight up front, listen, man, we want to beat up monsters and get rich and be famous. That's what we want. Please run that game. And the GM now knows that and they can run that game for you. If you don't tell them what you want and you only communicate it through like uh, when a combat encounter starts or by playing on your phone whenever politics are happening, those aren't clear communications. Uh, the GM isn't always going to know what that indicates. The other players aren't going to know what that indicates in regards to your interest in what's going on at that moment. So tell everybody up front. Use a session zero uh, is my favorite technique for achieving this. Uh, a session zero is effectively where you meet up on the same time you're going to play, but you don't start playing the first time you meet up. You spend the entire time, several hours, generating characters, forging backstory ties, and making it clear to everybody involved what is going to go on and what everybody wants out of it. Another technique I like to use for this as a GM that can help enable here uh, is it's called three wishes. Basically, every player writes down three wishes of things they want to happen to their character. Uh, whether the character wants it or the player wants it is immaterial, but three things they, the player, want to happen to their character over the course of the game. And then you hand those things into the GM and the GM usually is able to work those things in and enhance the experience. But all of this is predicated on honesty and transparency and that's a theme you're going to hear a lot during this whole episode and a lot of my future game talks as well tell people what you're thinking tell people what you want because if you don't tell them they don't know number two trust the gm or the dm or the storyteller or the director or wh whatever term it is for the game you're playing trust them and when i say trust them i don't mean assume they're not jerks i mean trust them absolutely in their role and the capacity as the arbiter of your game most commonly the way i see this violated and the reason this tip is so important is that a lot of people get hung up on the minutia of the rules and you have to understand that the rules of a game are a framework and that a very important part of both game design rules design and the art of storytelling is knowing when to bend the rules think of some of the greatest moments uh in many of the fantasy epics right let's think of lord of the rings right when eowyn faces down the, with a witch king right? No man can slay me. I don't remember the exact word. I am no man. Boom. Bent the rule in a cool way that was appropriate to the theme of the scene. There's tons of this in, in every work of fantasy genre, sci-fi genre. Things work a certain way, but oh no, the bad guys or maybe the good guys found out a way to make it not work that way. That's going to happen in your games too, and you want that. Don't get all twisted because the GM is doing something or says that something happens that isn't in line with your out-of-play understanding of the rules. The easiest way to conceive of this in my experience is to imagine that the rules kind of translate into the natural laws of the reality that your character occupies, right? Your character has lived in a world where things work a certain way. If something happens that doesn't go according to the rules, take that in character. If you land an attack and the effect of the attack is like, the other guy is dead, and the GM says like, yeah, well, he's not dead. 
You, the player, shouldn't go, oh, blah, blah, blah. page 178 clearly states the character, your character, on the other hand, can absolutely go, but no, he should be dead. That's impossible. I, I, nobody gets stabbed in the heart and lives. This is insane. That takes the confusion that you're experiencing. It brings it in play and makes it a character response. It makes it a very legitimate character response, and it creates for cool role play. Does your character now start questioning other things that they believe to be true? Does your character now go, well, I want to know how to get stabbed in the heart and not die? How does that person who responds to the world around them respond to the rules being broken? What you don't want to do is is take it out on the GM. You definitely, absolutely never want to argue with them in the heat of the action. If you absolutely disagree with something your GM has done, you have to trust them in that moment, even if you don't agree with what happened, because you have to assume that they know what they're doing for the health of the game. If you really have a problem with it, you can take it up with them afterwards and have a discussion. When mistakes are made, they're usually not malicious. That's another thing you should trust. Your GM is not out to get you. Your GM is out to run a good game for you. If you get overwhelming evidence this isn't true, maybe you're at a toxic table. But at a healthy table made up of people you know, there's no reason whatsoever not to trust the GM. This kind of ties into point number five, which we'll get to later. But the TLDR is your GM is always right during the flow of the game. Don't interrupt the game to question the GM. Don't assume the GM is doing something wrong just because it doesn't work the way that you understand it to work. Because A, you might be wrong. Or B, the GM might be intentionally violating, breaking, or otherwise contrasting with a game rule to make a point. So just trust your GM and let it ride. Moving on to number three, share the spotlight. Do not try to be the hero of every session and every plot and every arc and every campaign. Take your share, but make sure that everyone else at the table is getting a chance to be the big badass, that everyone else at the table is getting a chance to fulfill what they stated from question or from tip number one, which is, you know, what do they want? Make sure everybody else is getting what they want. It is not solely the DM's responsibility to make sure that everyone at the table is having fun. Every player also has a responsibility to every other player to take actions and to do things that play into the fun of their fellow players. If you are the big combat monster and you're the star of every combat, maybe once in a while you should let someone else take a big role in combat. Or maybe combat is your niche and that's fine, but maybe you should let other players be the star when you're not in combat. When you're doing politics, maybe your character shouldn't pipe up as much. Sometimes you have to adjust your character's concepts. Sometimes you have to metagame a little bit and you need to remember that metagaming is not a dirty word. We're gonna do another video on this later, by the way, metagaming and why it's not a dirty word. You need to remember that you're making the game fun for everybody else is way more important than some concept of resimilitude and consistency within your character. Your character is not the important thing. The players are the important thing. The character should be twisted if the players are going to have more fun and the game is going to be healthier for them as a result. So share the spotlight. Let people have their niche. Don't trample over their niche. Let people into your niche sometimes if you guys share the same skill set. Find a way for you to be cool together. That's a really fun way to do it. If there are two combat badasses in your party, do a back-to-back -back badass moment. Get up on each other. Find some ways to combine and synergize your combat badassery to make a cool scene. But remember that it's not all about you and remember that you as a player have as much of a responsibility to make the game fun for other people by sharing the spotlight, by sharing your niche and by being open and transparent as the GM does. Tip number four, get on the rails. This goes back to our metagaming isn't a dirty word thing. At the beginning of the game, the hardest thing to achieve, unless you're starting in media res, which is one of my favorite ways to, to kind of run around the end zone on this one. But at the beginning of the game, getting everyone together in a way that's organic and makes sense is hard. So just let it happen. Metagame a little bit. Make up a reason. Decide on the fly that your character is deeply offended by these goblins attacking the tavern and he's going to go fucking do something about it. And nobody's going to stop him. And anyone who would come with him is his comrade from that moment on. Just make it happen. Don't think about it too much. If you make a character who's like a lone wolf, you make a character who's like, well, I don't know. I just don't think I'm interested in this plot. You either eat a you need to change your character or b you need to make a new character because the game can't move forward if you're splitting the party, if you're refusing to participate in the main storyline that your GM is putting all the prep time or lack of prep time, at least creativity into. You have to get on the rails. Now, I'm not saying you have to follow the rails loyally forever, but you need to get on the train at the beginning 
and take it to the next station at the very least. Maybe then you can get off and do your own thing, but don't be ornery about it at the very beginning of the game. It's the most frustrating thing in the world when the, everybody else at the table, including the GM, just wants to get everybody together and go beat up some goblins. They want to get everybody together and start exploring the world. They want to get everybody together and do whatever it is the campaign is going to be about in those initial few expository sessions and have somebody at the table who's like, no, I think I'm just going to stay at the tavern. That's cool. And that detracts from the experience in a really serious way. So this is one of the easiest ones. It's another example of positive metagaming. Get on the train. Just follow the plot, at least at the start. Don't question it. Just do it. And finally, and possibly the most difficult one, we've got tip number five. Offer honest feedback. Now, honest is obviously the hard word here. How many times have you gone to a game session, whether it's a LARP or a tabletop or even a board game night, and at the end, the organizer or even another player says, hey, did everybody have fun tonight? And everyone in the room goes, yeah, I had fun. Yeah, it was pretty good. I had a good time. How many of those people are lying? A lot of them. At least some of them. Perhaps once in a while you have a session where everybody just had an amazing time and everything was great. Even when you had fun, there's feedback to be offered. So this is my tip for you. Offer feedback on every session of every game. If it was perfect and you loved everything about it, then your feedback should include, this was awesome. I loved that we faced down an antagonist for my backstory and I got to be the hero, but my friends were able to back me up and we were able to overcome him and I get closure for my character's personal plot, but also I began a new personal plot because I found out more stuff. I loved all of it. It was awesome. Write that down. But if something shitty happens, you need to say it to the person who is responsible as soon as possible. I know this is hard. I have social anxiety. I get it. A lot of you are probably listening to this and saying, oh, I just don't really want to, I don't want to make a scene. I'm not saying to flip your shit, but I'm saying you need to be honest. And you need to construct a culture at your table of being honest with one another. If you're not having fun with a game, you need to say, all right, man, uh, this game is just nothing but us beating up monsters and all the combats are really hard and that's just not, I'm not really into it. At that point, you've now opened a dialogue and you can move to a resolution. That resolution might be, okay, man, uh, well, that wasn't really my intent. And I think we're going to run the game a little differently. We'll add in some more non-combat sections. We'll, we'll take the difficulty of the combats down a little bit and make sure you have a good time. Or everybody else at the table wants this style of game. And unfortunately, if I change this for you, it's going to be less fun for the other four players. Maybe you should find another game or make a new character. And that is not something you need to be afraid of. Uh, perhaps the, the real gist of this tip is don't be afraid of giving feedback and don't be afraid of finding a resolution that doesn't involve everyone continuing to play in the exact same way. People have to bend. They have to adjust what they're doing to accommodate for the other people there. And without offering honest feedback, be that positive or negative, there is no way that you'll ever achieve resolution on the imperfections in your game. This is doubly important in a larger scale game, such as a LARP that has 40 or 50 players, because in a tabletop game, the GM is present for everything that's happening. The GM is present for the reactions and for the ideas and for the responses and the attitudes that are associated with the things that are happening in the game. In a LARP scenario, that is absolutely not true. There is usually only one GM to every 10 players, and that's if you're lucky. So there's a lot of things that happen that aren't going to be within the gaze of the game masters and the directors. And in those contexts, feedback is even more important. And you have to be elaborate. You have to be specific in order for people to understand what's going on. You, the player, offering feedback have the biggest amount of power over the quality of the game because you can communicate whether or not you're having fun. And in the end, whether or not you are having fun is the key indicator of whether or not a game is fun. So offer that feedback. Tell people what you like, tell people what you hate, but whatever you say, just make sure you are honest. That wraps it up for our five tips on being a better player. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please click that subscribe button. Make sure to like the video. Leave a comment. Tell me how right or wrong I am. I want to hear it either way. Share this video to your friends. We really appreciate the time uh, that you just spent watching. I will see you guys next time for Game Talk on Friday. And I've got good news for you. That's right, baby. Starting in September, it's two Game Talks a week. Oh, shit. I will see you next time.